Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Mr. Aguilar here. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. You guys have already taken out your Chromebooks. Um, the do now should already be in your guys' note stuff. Um, so I'm um, going to put those away. You guys should have the handout right now. Um, turn up the volume if you need to hear me. If you have earphones, go ahead and plug those in. Um, you can stop it at any time you guys need to. So please keep that in mind as we do this. Uh, today's lesson is very straightforward. I'm just trying something different here. If you guys need my help still, uh, please be more than happy to, to raise your hand. I'll be more than happy to go around. Myself and Miss Reyes will be walking around. Um, if I'm not here today, which is going to happen 4, 5, and 6, um, please make sure that you guys contact the teacher or see Miss Reyes for extra help. It should be self-explanatory. Do your best. I know it's something new. Uh, we'll cover this more on Thursday if I need to, um, so don't freak out. Um, here we go. This is graphing inequalities. So linear inequalities can be graphed just the way a standard slope, intercept, and point slope are. Um, we talked about these before already, looking at them. Um, the form that we talked about with standard form was um, AX plus BY is equal to C. We talked about slope intercept, which is Y is equal to MX plus B. And our last one, point slope, which is Y minus Y1 is equal to MX minus X1. Okay, we definitely are able to graph those and I'm gonna practice those on the next slide, which you should see right below you. Um, the only difference is, is we use a test point. And I'll get into that, what I mean by that in a, in a little bit. But the test point refers to a location on the graph that we're gonna be able to try in our equation. The test point that we usually generally use is zero, zero, because anything times zero is zero. Um, and it'll be easy, you know, we'll be easily able to determine whether that value point is good or bad. If it's good, we shade to that region. If it's bad, we don't. Um, the other difference is, is when we graph our line, usually what we do is if it's a straight line, um, we usually just have it drawn out. Um, in this case, when we have an inequality that is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, our line for our linear equation, if I give you a quick graph, will just be solid. It'll be a solid line, whatever direction have you, whether it be sideways, we can graph it on the side like that. That'd be a Hoy, um, a Hoy equation. We can also graph it just sideways like that. Um, we always use it just when the inequality is less than or equal to. The other version of this is when we have an equation that's strictly less than or strictly greater than. In that case, it will be a dashed line. What I mean by dash is meaning that the graph will just look dashed all the way going up through the point. Um, it can also be looking horizontally like a Hoy, a Hoy equation or a horizontal line. We can also have it going downward. So whenever we graph our line, if there's no line underneath our inequality, we just say it is dashed. Um, the other version of this would be solid. And I want you guys to reference those as we do these because it is important um, going through our problems. Sorry about that. Let's just practice our old way of graphing our linear lines. In this case, we have three different versions. We have our point slope, um, slope intercept, and we have our vertical and horizontal lines. Whew. These are going to be the ones that we definitely want to be able to look at and see and identify with. Um, the first one that we're getting up here is our point slope. I'll write it up there. Um, just to practice with you guys, we have the other one, it's our uh, slope intercept. And our last one that we have here is our vertical and horizontal. And at any time you guys need to stop and rewind it, please feel free. Um, this should be reviewed for you guys. Um, I do want you guys to be able to see what we're doing here. Um, so practices. The first point slope that we're just going to be able to graph, it tells us a point. We use our opposite point, which is negative 2, 4. And our slope would be 5 over 2, negative 5 over 2. Graphing our point first, I'm going to go back to up 4. That's our starting point. And then from that point, we're going to go ahead and go down 5 over 2 to our second point and then connect our lines. The next one that we want to be able to see here is our slope intercept. So my y-intercept in this case is going to be negative 1. And my slope in this case will be 1 third. I'm going to go down to negative 1 
then up one over three to graph my line for this. It is imperative that you guys are able to graph this correctly. If you guys need rulers, there's rulers up at the front of the classroom. So please make sure you guys go and try those out. Um, the vertical lines, so for vertical lines, we use the acronym BUCKS. Vertical lines are, unde are undefined for all values of X. Vertical lines go up and down. Um, in this case, at two, we're gonna go vertical for our X equals to two. I'm gonna write the equation up there just so you guys can see it. The other one that we have here is our HOI equation. Horizontal lines are going left and right. In this case, at y is equal to negative three, it tells me I'm gonna go back down at negative three and draw a line that's gonna be across that value, negative three. Um, take your time, look over these, try these again. Look how I did them because it's gonna be very important that you guys try these out. On Thursday, we're gonna be reviewing this and looking over, so please make sure that you guys are checking these out. Okay, go ahead and copy the stuff down to the left, your three little boxes right there. The first thing that we wanna be able to do is identify the type of graph, how to graph it. So we're gonna graph it, just our two points to start out with. Um, from the line, we're gonna determine whether it's solid or dashed. So if it's solid, it'll be a solid line. If it's dashed, it'll be dashed. And then we wanna use a test point to determine the shaded region. So in this case, I'm gonna use our test point zero, zero, and you'll get to that in a little bit. The equation that we're getting here for our type of graph is definitely y equals mx plus b, so this is slope intercept. And we're gonna do all the different types. So I want you guys to try these out. Um, pause it if you need to and go back. I'm looking at our slope here is four over one from our equation. My y intercept is going to be negative three. So we have those values there. Let's go ahead and plot our two points. So I'm gonna start at negative three for my y intercept. Then I'm gonna go up four over one, one, two, three, four over one. In this case, our inequality is solid because the inequality is strictly greater than, oh, I apologize, it's actually dashed. And the reason why it's dashed is because there is no line underneath our inequality. So because of that, we wanna be able to see that it is a dashed line dash sign because we do not have an inequality line underneath it or an equal sign to it. So in this case, our points are gonna be connected. It's gonna be a dashed line through our point. So those are the only differences that we're making so far. And we wanna be able to shade the region. It's either gonna be shaded on the left-hand side of the line or the right-hand side, depending on where the value point is at. In this case, our test point is at zero, zero. So if it works out, we're gonna shade it to that side. If it is wrong, we're gonna shade it to the other side. Okay, so using our test point, I know that my x is first, my y is second, so I'm gonna plug it in. Zero is greater than four times zero minus three. Zero is greater than zero minus three, or zero is strictly greater than negative three. In this case, zero is greater than negative three. We knew that to be true. So because this is a true statement, we're gonna shade this side of our equation. We're gonna shade this side of our line. And I'll color code it differently for you guys to see. Our ink color in here, let's change it to green. So let's try this. So my line will be shaded on this side of the line. Some of you guys have remembered doing this. It's up to you guys to kind of go through your old uh, notes that you guys have there from seventh and eighth grade. Um, some of you guys did do these, some of you guys did not. If anything, we're still gonna cover those. So it's important that you guys will still be able to graph those. The shaded region is to the left. The shaded region indicates that any point on the left-hand side of that line will always hold true. Anything that's not shaded or anything to the right of the graph will not hold true and it will be a false statement. So we know we have infinitely many different types that we can plug in to make sure that works, but we're just gonna kinda of stick to our point zero, zero. Let's try another one. This is our next graph. In this case that we're getting here, we have our um, point slope form. Oh, sorry. We have our point slope form. So in this case that we're gonna get here, let's go and see our point slope. You can always review back on your slope, your point slope graph information. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and get our point, which is negative one, two, and our slope will be negative three over two. So let's go ahead and graph that first, 
we'll determine the solid point later. So I'm going to go back one up two, and then I'm going to go down three over two. Okay. We know in this case that their inequality is less than or equal to, but because we have a line, it will be solid this time. So just looking like a regular graph. I'm going to graph our point here. So we go down right there through a solid line. Comes really close to the origin, but we're still good. That origin point is still there, which is below the graph. So in this case, if it's good, we're going to shade the bottom side. If it is bad, we shade it to the other side. So let's do our test point. Our test point is still 0, 0. So let's check it. 0 minus 2 is less than or equal to negative 3 over 2. 0 plus 1. We're going to get negative 2 is less than or equal to negative 3 over 2. 0 plus 1 or just 1. Negative 2 is less than negative 3 over 2 because three and a half times one is just one. Negative two is less than one and a half, so we know this statement to be true. So it is true, you can plug it into a calculator. Another way you guys can see it is negative two is less than or equal to negative 1.5. So we know that's still true. Um, in this case, we're gonna shade below it, so this is still holding on, and we're gonna shade below our graph. You guys can use highlighters, however have you, but our point is still on the left side of our graph. And we'll practice this again. I'm going to review this stuff with you guys as well. I just want to try this lesson out with you guys. Okay, so here we go for that. That's the point slope type of problem. Let's continue on going. The next one we have is either a horizontal or vertical. I'm hoping you guys can identify this by now. In this case that we're getting here, we have a horizontal line, and I'm hoping you guys see why. This is HOI, it follows from our acronym HOI. Horizontal lines are left and right for all values of Y values, so Y numbers. So let's go ahead and graph our line. I'm gonna go down negative three, leaving at that point there. In this case, my inequality is greater than, strictly greater than, so I know it to be dashed. There is no line underneath it, so we know it's dashed. So I'm gonna go ahead and graph it with dashes through them on negative three. Boom. Okay, here we go for the next part here. We want to be able to determine whether we're shading above. So if it's good, we're going to shade above it. If it is bad, we're going to shade below it, right? Because our test point that we're going to use is 0, 0. We're going to use the or origin as our test point. This is x and y. So let's plug it into our equation. Just going to plug it in over there. 0 is greater than negative 3. Is it good? Is that bad? In this case, you should know by now, zero is greater than negative three in our number line. So it's gonna be shading above our graph. So shade, 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 shade. Boom, cool beans, cool beans, guys. Hopefully you guys get that. You guys can always stop the video to go over it um, to make sure you guys are trying out these problems. But let's continue, let's continue. Okay, we have a slope intercept this time, so let's go and try this problem out. Okay, let's change up our color for this one. Let's change it up to burgundy. Okay, the graph the, the graph the line uh, graph the type of graph graph the type of graph. Um, that doesn't make any sense. I just realized that. Uh, here we go. It's a slope intercept. I'm going to get my y intercept, or my b in this case is going to be 2. My slope in this case will be 1 half. Let's graph our two points. I'm going to go up 2 for my y intercept. From there, I'm going to go up 2 over 1 for my slope. In this case, my inequality is greater than or equal to, so I know it to be solid because of my line. So I'm going to graph my line through this right there. Okay, let's test our point. In this case, we're still using our origin as 0, 0. So if it is good, we're shading the bottom side. If it is bad, we're going to shade the top side. So let's check it. In this case, 0 is greater than 1 half times 0 
plus 2. When we simplify this down, 0 is greater than 1 half times 0 is 0. 0 is 2. Is 0 greater than 2? Is the alligator's mouth opening up to the bigger number, as they would say? In this case, we would say it is not. It is wrong. So because it is wrong, we want to shade the top side. So we're going to shade the top side of this. This is the part that we're going to shade above the graph this time. So the other times we've been looking at have been shading below it or the side that's true. In this case, because it's bad, we want to shade away from the point, away from our origin point or the test point. Okay, so try that one out. See how well you guys do. Look it over. Let's keep on going with this. You still have a little bit more. Okay. It's another example five. We're going to skip over that. You guys have the other examples to go over. Um, but you have three here. You have three here. So let's check those out. Um, I want to be able to see how we're going to do these. Uh, you're given three different types of graphs. In this case, your slope intercept and a bucks equation, which is vertical line. So let's graph, let's graph these as we'd see them. So my M will be three over one. My B in this case would be one. My less than symbol tells me it's going to be dashed. And we're going to use our test point zero, zero. So let's see how that works. Okay. Graphing our point, I'm going to go up one, up one over three. So I'm back one down three is right here. In that case, it was dashed, so I made that wrong. So let's go ahead and change this up a little bit. Let's go back, apologize, apologize, ink color, so in this case it's dashed through our point. We want to be able to check to see if it's going to work. My origin point is still on the right side, so this would be good here. If the test point works, it would be bad on this side if it does not, so let's test it. We're going to get 0 is less than 3 times 0 plus 1. 0 is less than 1. Is 0 less than 1? Yes, it is true, so we want to shade our right side. Always, always, always. Okay, there it is for that one. Let's try the next one over. Let's see how that one works. In this case that we're getting here, we're getting another slope intercept. So we're going to use our other equation to graph this. So we're going to get m is equal to 2 over 3, which is our slope. My b in this case is negative 3. The inequality is less than or equal to, so we're going below that. So let's check to see if it works. In this case, it would be a solid line this time because the line underneath it. And we're still going to check our test point. So let's use our test point there. So let's graph our, our line. We're going to go down 3 and then up 2 over 3. Is going to be solid, so I'm going to draw my line through there like that, like so. Okay, we're there. The next thing we want to be able to do is test our origin. In this case, it's above it, so if it's above it, it's good. If it's below it, it's bad. So let's test it. Zero is less than or equal to two thirds times zero minus three. Beauty about zero is anything times zero is zero, so we're just going to get zero is less than negative three. Is zero less than negative three? Do we like that? Is zero less than negative three? So is it further left on our number line? Or does it make sense that you're gonna lose money or instead of having no money? In this case, it would be bad. This is a bad sign. So we're gonna shed below it. Boom. Okay, there we go for that one. The next one that we're gonna get here. Hopefully you guys recognize this. This is Vux. What's well, a vertical line for x values? In this case, my inequality is dashed. There's no line underneath it. And we still got to use our test point zero, 0. So x and y for those. So we're going to go up to 4 on my x value. It's going to go vertical line that is dashed. If it's still using 0, 0, if it's good on this side, we shade it to that side. If it's bad on this side, we shade the other side to it, which is not that much. So let's check it out. Is 0 less than 4? Would that work out? Is 0 less than 4? Yes, you better believe it. You better hope so. 
we're going to shade that left side of it. So boom, boom, boom. Take it over, look it over, see how to do these. Pause it, try these ones out. Okay, so that's how we want to be able to graph our inequalities. And we're going to look at this for a couple of days. Um, we're going to practice it more on Thursday with the whiteboards. Um, I haven't decided whether we want to do a quiz on Friday on this yet because we just barely talked about it. So we'll see how we do. If it is, it'll be very simple, a half sheet of paper, four questions, done. Okay, but here we go. Try out our next ones and our final one, I believe. Okay, so looking at our example here, it says graph the following inequality, determine which test point works. So in this case, we're given a graph and line. We want to be able to see which test point will work. And this might be a good test question because it's, it's asking you kind of multiple things. And you've got to be able to tell me where it's going to be shaded. Okay, it can be done multiple ways. I'm going to show you guys the easy way of doing this. So let's do it. Um, we have slope form. So our slope in this case is going to be 5 over 2. And our B in this case, or my y-intercept, will be 2. So let's graph it. I'm going to go up 2, up 5 over 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2. I know it's kind of off our graph, which is fine. The inequality in this is uh, a line underneath it, so it's solid. So that's good. I'm going to go ahead and create my line through this, try to be as accurate as I possibly can. I hope you guys try to do the same. And let's, let's go ahead and shade this. Let's see how we're going to shade this, and we'll try to make it a little bit more clear. We still want to use our test point. So test point is going to still be 0, 0. Test point 0, 0 will be plugged in. 0 is less than or equal to 5 over 2 times 0 plus 2. Beauty about it, anything times zero is just zero, so zero less than or equal to two. Is that true or false using test point zero, zero here? In this case, zero is less than two, so we do want to shade it to that side. So we're going to shade it, and we're trying to make it just highlighted. And actually, let's, let's see if I can use a different highlighter. Let's erase our old stuff. Let's, let's see this one, that one. So let's see what I can do for this. Let's see if we can make this a little bit clearer for you guys to see. Highlighter. Let's see how much of highlighters. Ooh, this is kind of cool. Should have been doing this the whole time, guys. I apologize. So we have our highlighting side will be the shaded region. So there you go for that one there. Okay. The cool thing about it, let's see what test point works. And we can always go back and check them by seeing the values of these. So we're going to go back to our A point. So if I go back four and up four, so back four, up four, this is test point A. Is that value good? Is that in the shaded region? In this case, it's no, it is not. Okay, let's look at zero, zero. So our test point B is at our origin. In that case, the origin value does work. So we say, yeah, it is good. It's a point that exists in our point, in our region. Um, let's go to our last point, C, which is over two, down four. Here at C, it is in the shaded region. So because it's in the shaded region, we hold good. Um, I can give you guys more points. Uh, I want to describe about what it means to be on the line. If I give you a test point that's on the line, what happens if it's solid or dashed? Does it exist? Does it not? Uh, we'll talk about this later. Um, go back, look over the, look over the other ones, um, and check to see how well you guys do on these. Um, that's about it. Go ahead and finish up your couple of problems that you have left on there. Uh, turn that into the sub, myself, or Miss Reyes to get you guys' homework for today. Um, it will be due tomorrow retest or this afternoon, so come and check it out. Um, I'll be here this afternoon when I get back from my meeting. Uh, you guys have a fantastic day, guys. Stay warm. Bye, guys.